I would not bother showing this film to any woman. They would never understand it. This is men's business. Serious men's business. Mac was at the braai and Stu was at the braai and I was at the braai. Three men standing around a braai, sipping beer, staring at Borovors, rolling them backwards and forwards, never leaving them alone. We were drawn there like moths to a flame. The braai was a powerful gravitational force, a mad magnet. Stu said the thin ones could use a turn. I said, yeah, I reckon the thin ones could use a turn. Mac said, they could definitely do with a turn. It was a unanimous turning decision. Mac was the tong master, a true artist. He gave a couple practice snaps with his long silver tongs before moving in, prodding, teasing, and with an elegant flick of his wrist, rolling them onto their little backs. Unless the tong man would have flicked too hard, the sausages would have gone full circle back to where they started. Kevin was passing us. He heard the siren song sizzle of the sausages. The briar was calling, beckoning. We said how's it and began the briar shuffle. Mac shuffled to the left, Stu shuffled to the left, I shuffled to the left, Kevin slipped in beside Stu, we sipped our beers. Now there were four of us staring at the bury. Mac gave me the nod, my cue. I was the second in command. I had to take the raw sausages out of the plastic bag and lay them on the bry. The chipolatas were tiny. They could easily slip down between the grill, falling into the molten hot netherworld below. Carefully I laid them sideways across the grill. Mac snapped his tongs with approval. Clever think. Good work. Nice one. There was no greater bry honour. Luke came along. The irresistible lure of the bride pulled him in too. How is it? Hey. Stu was the fork pronger. He had the fork to prong the tough hides of the Free State's finest burrowers, and he showed a lot of promise. Stabbing away eagerly, leaving perfect little vampire holes up and down the skins. You know, I'd uh, I thought they'd have cooked a lot better if they didn't keep poking. In the silence, you could have heard a chipolata drop. This newcomer was a rabble rouser, bringing in his crazy ideas from the outside. He didn't understand the hierarchy. First the tong master, then the burrile, then the fork pronger. Everyone below was just a watcher. I'll just, uh... Maybe eventually they'll move up the ladder, but for now, don't rock the weaver. Then Wendy came up. Mmm, smells good, guys. She was trying to jostle into the circle. We closed ranks, but she was keen, heading for the only available space, out there on the other side. The gap in the circle where all the smoke and ashes blew. Nobody could survive the gap. Nobody had ever survived the gap. Wendy was going to try. She stood there stubbornly, smoke blinding her eyes, ashes filling her nostrils, sausage fat splattering all over her arms and face until she could take it no more. We sipped our beers. And then Mac handed me his tongs. I knew what was happening. I'd waited a long time for this moment. The abdication. The tongs weighed heavy in my hands, firm in my grip. Was I ready for the responsibility? Yes, I was. I held them up high and proud. I was the tongue master. But only until Mac got back from the toilet.